SUVs can be very, very versatile. Whether you're hauling little Johnny to the soccer practice or you're driving up to the Alps through the snowy winter roads, there are often many uses for modern day SUVs. Unfortunately, no two are built the same. Sadly, there's hundreds of thousands of unfortunate customers that have bought some seriously unreliable SUVs and found themselves in a world of hurt, having to dole up thousands of dollars to keep that vehicle running. I'm gonna stop that right here, give you a list of 10 of the worst, most unreliable SUVs that you definitely don't wanna buy if you at least care at all about your money, safety, health, and happiness. Let's get into it now. The first one on the list is literally one that I like to refer to as Das Auto. And what are we looking at here? This is in fact a Volkswagen right there and it's large and it's charged. Here's another Volkswagen, but you'll notice this one's quite a bit larger. It has this great front end, this front grille piece. It definitely has a very unique front hood assembly. You get these flared front haunches, beautiful wheels, lots of glass on top, and of course a great running rack there. And we circle around to the back and you'll notice you get these great beefy looking tail lights and one, two tailpipes there. You can tow some weight with it, not sure I would want to, on this Atlas right here by VW. A lot of people assume the German manufactured products are superior in every way. And in some cases that is the truth, but in a lot of cases they're just over-engineered for the sake of over-engineering and it will cost you reliability in the long term. Some classic issues you'll find in here are the clock spring on there on the steering wheel. Of course that leads to all your controls and electrics on the steering wheel. That is a problem with some of these. Fuel injectors, oh no, that's a big problem and that can cost big bucks on a direct injected engine. Another sad state of affairs on earlier models, you can get some wind noise that you'll find typically coming in this A-pillar right there and you're whistling in there and customers are wondering what is going on there, but that is another issue that you can expect. We won't even talk about all the electric problems in these as well. So while they are great and they're not considered a true luxury vehicle, sadly the German engineering comes through in spades. Poor quality, over-engineered and expensive to repair and maintain. Definitely one you don't want to even buy. So the second vehicle on my list that's literally one of those I would recommend staying away and run as far as you can is what we're looking at back here. And what we're talking about is actually a Buick Encore. And while they are a very small compact little SUV, they do offer economy, fun, frivolous little driving experience, and certainly an interesting styling perspective. I mean, they do bring these LED tail lights to the game on these Buicks. What we're looking at here is an all-wheel drive CX version. They do have some nice touches at the bottom here as well. Some fake vents, certainly no exhaust tips there to note. They also have some nice flares, a very attractive little vehicle with some styling details, a roof rack that can haul your bed bug infested mattress to the dumpster, and of course even great mirrors with dual tone door handles with soft touch access. The interior also looks quite stylish and very cute, has all the most up to date and styling detail like brushed aluminum and chrome detail. But interestingly enough, they don't necessarily rank all that well. Yes, RepairPal gives them a four out of five, which is questionable, but that's only because they haven't been out a ton of time yet. And also because they're a relatively low cost, entry level price point type vehicle. So the annual service costs are only about $468. But because they have such a questionable and wide array of failures, I would definitely consider these relatively unreliable. And because they're based on a GM product, while parts are low in cost, I would anticipate the frequency of failures and the potential severity of the failures. What kind of problems can you expect? Well, some issues are based on the engine. There's many people that have noted that sometimes you can expect sometimes stalling from some of these engines, or in fact, smoke out of the exhaust hesitation and in the worst case you can actually anticipate an actual catastrophic engine fire yes that's right there are some of these vehicles that are known to actually ignite very very scary moment indeed when you're driving one of these vehicles on top of that turbochargers which drive and produce more power by injecting additional pressure into the engine have been another known failure component within some of these vehicles and to note many problems related to braking issues surging pulsating or replacement required. They are relatively small brakes, as you can see very small calipers, but they are known to fail and prematurely, they're quite a conversation piece on these vehicles. There's also talks about defective safety equipment, airbags, and some of the sensors on these vehicles have also produced some of the issues. And a lot of GMs seem to have that issue. Cadillac, we know, is another GM product that has that ring around the airbag system on the steering wheel that has been a problem, as well as some of the pedestrian warning systems. Problematic, to say the least. Climate control related issues inside, as well, transmission issues. In some cases, delayed shifting, delay engagement, grinding, sudden acceleration, where it just delays, delays, and then goes. 
And unfortunately, we know that GM has had a lot of problems with transmissions lately. You don't have to look very far to know that it also happens in pickup trucks. So while some reviewers consider these somewhat reliable, that's only because when something breaks, the costs of parts are quite low. The bottom line is it's a price point vehicle and it's definitely built like one. The Buick Encore is a mess. And if you really wanted a small SUV, I would personally go with a vehicle like a Lexus NX. And the third one on our list is actually this little SUV right here. This is one clearly not known for reliability. Nobody's ever gonna say these are durable or reliable. They are in fact somewhat popular because a lot of youthful buyers love these for their style, their look. Let's take a closer look and understand first of all why people are even buying these vehicles because they are in fact quite unreliable. What we're looking at here, clearly an off-roading type vehicle. You have a big lift right there. You can see pretty extensive ride height there. You have big tires, very easy access to a spare, which allows you to change a spare roadside, or if you happen to have an issue on the trail, you can change it there too. People love them because very rugged, rugged, lots of hard wearing parts. Hit some trees and brush with this, it won't break. Of course, even there, you won't bend your rocker panel because you have extra protection right there. More protection, simple access, more hard, easy wear in plastics lots of hard wearing pieces that are definitely going to take the abuse of course you have big suspension parts there they're going to help you with articulation get you climbing up rocks and shrubs and all kinds of other elevations of course you have lots of other great parts like this big bumpers solid you can tow your buddies out of the mud with this rig of course they do have these beautiful eyeball headlights and the typical tonka toy look what we're looking at right there as well nice these flip ups and this flips up and of course you have these great little lifts here some cool new updates on this particular model we're looking at is a rubicon which means it's got a lockable front hub and this vehicle is very very capable you can also even take the roof off here and make it into a bit of a convertible the doors pop off the window folds down very versatile all the way around inside is quite poorly made and very basic and cheap but people like them nonetheless what kind of issues can you expect number one Look up there, water ingress. Of course, you've got those seals up here. They often let water in. And of course, because the roof is meant to come on and off, on and off, often sometimes things get pinched or they wear out and you wind up filling that cabin like a fishbowl just because you let so much water in there. That's one common problem. Another issue is the intake sensors. You can get hunting and surging and uneven idle, problems with drivability related there, transmission issues. As well, another key issue with these, when you look inside there, the gauges and the lights sometimes come and go and power windows come and go and a lot of other random electrical failures because of what they call the TIPM, the totally integrated power module which basically is the central module that allows all the electrics to go in and out of it when that TIPM fails often a lot of your electrics come they go they fail they don't and that TIPM is often quite expensive to repair and replace with a lot of the jeep products you will find that to be an issue as well another common problem with these is the infamous loose suspension system of course as you look underneath here you get a lot of very off-road capable equipment underneath there but sadly that just means that there's more capability for it to work its way loose let me look at the long springs and the big articulation you can get what do you think that translates to well once you get to the point where bushings and tie rods and all those other parts start to wear because this vehicle is already intended to be loose and flexible for the elevation to be able to climb rocks and stumps obviously things just get 10 times worse than your garden variety vehicle so then you get what they call a death wobble and the vehicle becomes grossly unstable you can barely keep it between the lanes once you get these vehicles with some miles on them and you get up to in that hundred thousand miles or so the repair pal rates these at about three and a half out of five which isn't all that solid they also say that you can expect an annual service almost seven hundred dollars a year just to keep these on the road and while the unexpected incidence of major repairs is only 0.3 per year basically every two or three years you would expect something more major the problem is when it does become a major issue it's much greater than most other vehicles in its marketplace of course these you can expect 16 to 17 percent of those failures to be significant and large in value and cost so they're quite pricey and when they fail and when they break it's not an inexpensive proposition but the other hand if you really need to have these one of these vehicles buy one brand new don't buy one used because they are a problem when you start wearing parts out buying them new just means that you can buy it drive it for three four five years flip it and then basically get 80 or 90 percent of its original value back at the turn of a hat so you barely lose anything and the additional benefit of having a warranty means that buying it new 
could be a decent proposition, but know that sadly it will likely still hit the shop unexpectedly for some pricey repairs. The fourth SUV on the list is this little red unit right here. Not great. Hyundai. And as well, as you can see, the birds don't really like this vehicle all that much either. This is a blue drive, of course, some great mirrors. Of course, you have this wonderful little tail lights, and we're talking about a Kona by Hyundai right there. This one's electric, but it's the gas job that we're talking about specifically that is the problem. Firstly, I should mention, there's some caveats with this vehicle because vehicles like this, typically, if you don't have one of the big problems, then you're usually pretty good. And as a result, RepairPal actually ranks it four out of five for overall reliability. Consumers reports on the other hand, basically predicts it to be much lower than average reliability. So there's a bit of a conflict there, but I'll tell you this much for free, there's a lot of big problems. One of the issues here is early battery deterioration and drain. Another issue is down under there, you can't see it because it's an electric version, but the gas job, high oil consumption. It has to do with the piston rings in the engine, obviously not built for right tolerances and letting oil pass, creating additional oil consumption. That's a big issue here. Forward collision avoidance right there has been noted to be a major issue here as a whole plethora of other electrical gremlins throughout these vehicles and some of those electrical problems are a result of battery drawn battery drain and as well of course some of that has caused the prevalence of some of the sensing systems and protective systems to not function properly airbags another issue you can expect and there's a real big problem with some of these and HTSA has recognized that there's a lot of problems related to the engine and unfortunately if you're one of those unlucky customers that lands with one of these problem engines that Hyundai and Kia has had over the last few years, then you can recognize you may have high oil consumption, engine noises, ticking, knocking. You might even get a check engine light. The big one, of course, is if you actually get an engine stalling because an engine fails. You may actually have piston rings that break or unfortunately even worse, some of the machining process meant that a lot of the oil filings wound up in the cooling surfaces, prevented the bottom end of the engine, the rod bearings, from getting oil. They would starve it, they would overheat and potentially fail. And unfortunately, they'd fail roadside burning with the fire department having to show up because it has been that much of a problem. Allegedly, Hyundai and Kia have been a little slow on the uptake to actually get some of those problems rectified and identified. Fortunately, there was a whistleblower internally that came forward and said that there's an intentional delay. And as a result, now Hyundai and Kia are putting their best foot forward to try to fix some of these problems. Unfortunately, it has negatively impacted a lot of people. As a result, I personally would never ever even consider buying these ones. They are a drastic risk because of transmission, engine, electrics, just not worth the hassle. And number five on the list of vehicles I could not recommend, and they're absolutely horrible because of reliability issues. What we're looking at is another Jeep product. Right here, as you can see, it's a Jeep, and it has these fun little headlights. They also try to simulate those aggressive Tonka toy looks on the front, Fool and nobody. Can't really fake that. You have lots of plastic all over the place, plastic around there, plastic along the rocker panels, plastic around the rear fenders, simulating what you get with a Wrangler, but that's no Wrangler. No, no, this is junk. It is 4x4 though, Yay. not similarly equipped like the regular Wranglers, but it does have some great wheels and a great little door handle here with a soft touch access and a cutesy little mirror system. Roof racks to haul your clapped out couch to the dumpster as well. And of course what we have here, fake, and of course a little more fake inlets right there, but it's a cute vehicle. That's why people are buying them and they carry that legendary Jeep name. But the Jeep Renegade is just that. It's a renegade. It's ruthless. It's gone rogue for reliability. Lots of problems. Tiger Shark engine, heavy oil consumption, plugs off the systems, the emission systems, then results in poor CO emissions. Yes, you can get a manual gearbox or an automatic. That's been a problem if you go with the auto. Yes, that's also been a big issue. I know some people say, well, some of those transmissions are the ZF automatic transmissions, but regardless, there's still related problems, electrics, wiring harnesses and the like. Not a great machine. Sadly, with all those problems, you can even expect and anticipate suspension issues, which is the last thing you hope for in a vehicle that's supposedly good for off-roading. Yeah, it looks great. Don't let looks deceive you. And if you want something more durable in this space, maybe buy yourself a Toyota RAV4. And right there is number six. Yes, that one there is obviously the latest and the greatest Bronco. And of course, it's a Ford product. Lots of controversy around these. They're big, large, bold, and in charge. This isn't the sport version, the smaller. This is the full-size Ford Bronco. And there's a lot of great attributes. A lot of people are buying them. They look very rugged. They look very robust. And that's why people are picking these up. But there's been a, so many problems. Everybody knows you don't buy the first year of anything. 
And this is also very much inclusive. And unfortunately, Ford has to go through a lot of teething problems to get some of those issues resolved. And they have some problems, problems indeed. But why are some of the reasons people are even buying these knowing full well that there are issues? Well, I mean, look at the big beefy looking suspension, off-roading capability. You've got very similar to the Jeep. You also have plastic body panels to prevent from scratching and banging. Of course, very rugged looking front bumper. These great little hooks right here, beautiful. And of course, a grill that stands out. There's no mistaking this. Ford Bronco looks like nothing much else out there. They have a flip back soft top, and that is one of the issues, is leaks. But there are other issues. Sure, you've got plastic, just like the Jeep Wrangler does, and of course, more tough handles. The interior looks very beefy and robust, and actually a step up from what you'd see in the Wrangler. You've got these great little tail lights here, an extra wheel in case you get stuck in the mud or the back 40. Of course, more tow hooks there, and we're dealing with a Bronco. Very impressive looking wheels, and it's just an overall very prominent looking vehicle all the way around. Big bulging hood makes it look especially beefy, and these cool little holy crap hooks right here in case you gotta hold on tight. But there have been a few problems, things that just shouldn't happen. For example, some plastic vacuum lines cause drivability running issues, intake manifold gaskets getting sucked into the engine, vibration at speeds because the cardan joint on these vehicles, and of course the biggest issue that a lot of people are talking about, it's on the 2.7 liter eco junk engines that are basically spitting out or eating up valves. A lot of the valves are getting sucked in. There's already a lot of people talking about the 2.7s failing very early on. As a matter of fact, as little as 2,500 or 3,000 miles. And that's devastating because imagine if you had one of those that was weak but didn't fail at that early miles and you drive it long enough to get out of warranty, you could be up the creek with a catastrophic engine failure. I mean, at the end of the day, the valves drop, land in the combustion chamber, and catastrophically blow apart your engine. So at the end of the day, they're fun, frivolous, and yes, they're different than the Jeep Wrangler, and they're different than anything else on the road. But if I can make a recommendation, maybe instead of this, go with the Toyota 4Runner as a better option, or even better, just wait a few years until some of these problems get sorted. And the next one is number seven, what we're looking at here in white. It's a great looking little vehicle, and a lot of people love them. But it's basically the Hyundai Kona's other brother, right here from another mother. It does look sharp. We've got Kia's new design language, of course, some great detail on the front. Love those headlights, and some great wheels there too. Of course, some great design themes, and little touch access in there. And you've got this great little roof rack up the top, little overhang at the back, looks great. How about the LED tail lights? And of course, you have these fake little back ends here. There's actually no exhaust here. It's just made to look that way, but it's entirely fake on this Seltos by Kia. They do have great looking interiors, which are fun and fresh, but of course they're from the family of Hyundai and Kia with some of those engine issues. Some of that carries over. Some key things to note here is related to park disengagement and engagement. Either it works or it doesn't work. You may not be able to get it out of park or you may not be able to get it into park when you need it to. Oil leaks down under there. You could have some oil leaks. That's not uncommon and unfortunately stalling and this vehicle won't restart when you're at a set of lights. That is been a known issue as well with some of these in relatively small numbers but unfortunately these are one of those vehicles that are death by association and unfortunately because it's similar to the Kona which has been around it has too many problems and it's too much of a risk so maybe skip the Seltos and go with something like this beautiful little Honda CRV guaranteed to run twice as long and you won't have all those nickel and dime issues that you're gonna find with some of those Kias and Hyundai's and number eight the SUV that literally is one of those that I can't recommend unless you really need to have a Tesla. So what we're looking at here is a Tesla Model X. How do you tell that? Well, primarily because you see the door handles are front to back like that. That's how you tell directly and it's slightly larger. Some would consider it an SUV, some wouldn't, but I do because of its overall versatility. You have lots of seating capacity, seats in the front, seats here, and potentially in the back. You have lots of arrangement. What we actually have here is a Tesla Model Model X Plaid and you can see this is the thousand horsepower unit so clearly this is one of those vehicles if you need to have it and you want that power there's really nowhere else to get a thousand horsepower at this kind of price point so this is clearly what you want but if you don't need that thousand horsepower I would ask that you probably consider or reconsider buying one of these vehicles because of all of the issues that you can associate 
with a modern day Tesla Model X. They are the most upscale SUV on their marketplace. I mean, they look very intriguing. That's why people are buying them. This is the latest generation. They gave up the pitchfork style vent on there. This is the more update, looks great. Beautiful, clean front spoiler right there. And of course, I love that headlight. Very fresh and feisty, beautiful. Everything's clean. This looks like an Apple store on wheels right here. Cameras on board allow you to monitor this consistently. Of course, you have these fold away mirrors and this massive glass panel as you see it runs all the way up and over so that is a spot that if you're driving on roads that have a lot of gravel and rock like that that's a risk that you're gonna break that window that is one reason why you either need massive insurance or skip this model altogether but what are some of the issues other than some of the quality control problems you would expect and yes quality control problems there are I actually had the experience last year of doing a review test drive full drive of one of these beautiful Tesla Model X plaids like this and it is breathtaking it will suck the wind right out of you and hold it out of you but unfortunately there are some problems and some of the things I would experience and I've seen are related to fit and finish sometimes these door handles aren't always flush or sometimes one's in one's more out of course even fit and finish you look right here this doesn't really lay it doesn't fit flushly and actually there's a little bit of offset that side looks okay this side is actually up quite a bit as you can see this side here actually sits higher on the door panel rather than this side so clearly that is typically an issue of course yes you have the great Tesla badging all over the place but this is also a spot where I saw lots of that mismatched paneling was once those Falcon doors opened and then reclosed that is an area that you would expect so paint finish issues panel alignment lots of those quality control QC issues that you would expect in a lot of these vehicles but there's much more to this equation than just a few body panels as well as poor paint finish number one very difficult to tow it if the vehicle's dead number two there have been cases where some of the batteries have ignited in many of these cars and and it's very difficult for the emergency responders to actually put the fire out. And that is a part of the issue is that a lot of these batteries have failed prematurely. If they go and you need to do a full set of batteries, expect twenty to $25,000 for a full set. That in itself is enough to deter a lot of people from buying these particular SUVs. In lots of cases with autopilot issues, it doesn't work on some vehicles, other vehicles it does. The power steering has been known to be a problem for some of these. And sadly, electrics have been a big problem for a lot of customers. Some people, doors are a problem, some people they're not. Autopilot, a lot of electrics in general have been the problem. The other big issue is you have that central screen in the dashboard, and the big issue there is that that controls everything. Without that screen, this thing is dead in the water. And I actually had a Tesla Model 3 earlier this year and I got in one day and it wouldn't restart the dash didn't come on that actual center screen did not illuminate meaning I was stuck done I couldn't go anywhere the battery wasn't dead I just couldn't go anywhere I had this close close unlock lock tried it a few things stepped away messed around with it a little bit and then finally it came on I don't know if it was going through a reboot or what that's clearly a problem it's not reliable you could go into it one day thinking I'm just driving home and it just won't start because the center screen doesn't light up and a couple other things to note is you can get ghosting effects you can get that sun glare because that glass goes all the way up and it has this puny little visor that actually does help to keep some of the sunlight out but there's been lots of people with problems because the sun's coming in actually above you as well one big issue to note as well sudden acceleration could you imagine having a thousand horsepower on tap and the car decides to launch by itself yikes that sounds like a mess a ninth one is this beautiful little rig right here and what is this that we're looking at here it's actually a Range Rover here and as you can see it's Land Rover product and unfortunately they have had a reputation the JLR group which is Land Rover Range Rover as well as Jaguar have had some big issues they are absolutely gorgeous you won't find a nicer luxury SUV on the market amazing wheels high gloss large wheels lots of protective paneling along the bottom to protect it from all the rocks and the junk on the road of course looking at the back they have these glorious glorious tail lights in this Land Rover beautiful tail tailpipes down there and here you have a set of dual pipes and look at the vents and more vents and it's beautiful I love those headlights with the projector lamps there and LED surround of course gorgeous finishing on the front so there's a lot of motivation to buy these new. There's lots of great incentives, low borrowing rates, and a lot of the dealers are very competitive, willing to cut a deal. So buying these new can be great, but unfortunately, 
After a couple of years of warranty, be careful because they will literally sting you. And the problem is you almost get sort of rooked in. So once you commit to this, you can't really sell it on the used car market after three or four years because you lose almost half of its original value. And so you more or less are stuck into it. And then you get stuck paying the big price. After three or four years and your warranty is gone, you will feel the burn. But there's some problems with this too. And a reason why I wouldn't recommend one unless you know you have really deep pockets and a big thick bankroll. Some issues because they're direct injected, you can get issues with the fuel pumps. You can get the injectors that are a problem, of course, and they're very expensive to change out. The odd coolant leak, you could anticipate. And of course, because it's direct injected and they do pump out a lot of fuel with a supercharged V8 engine, right back there, you could potentially expect a lot of carbon pumping out of that exhaust tip right there. You also have the electronic e-brake system that can lock up and squeal or grind, and that's a problem, or it just doesn't work at all. Inside of these vehicles, the infotainment system is glorious, but unfortunately, a lot of times it fails. Electrical gremlins are a part and parcel in owning these vehicles. Constant firmware updates or not starting when you want it to. It means just more trips to the dealer. And you do look up top here, and of course you have this massive glass sunroof here and of course leaks are problematic too and we can actually get water into the cabin that is a troubles and of course very expensive to realign if there's problems with that you get very harsh downshifts from second to first and sometimes just aggressive upshifts the odd delay now for the most part that transmission's fairly stout because it's a zf8 speed auto so they are quite robust but there have been complaints with that there's also complaints on full lock and steering you can get clunk 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 because the differential at the front doesn't like to be turned that sharply so there are problems there's lots of problems some of which just go with the brand and some of them just mean another trip to the dealer and spending another thousand bucks repair pal also admits openly that this is only a two and a half out of five star for reliability you could expect to pay almost twelve hundred dollars a year for servicing and it's overall frequency to the shop isn't all that bad for this type of vehicle but it's when it goes there it's quite expensive at about 16 17 percent of the visits become of high consequence and big dollars so instead of buying the Range Rover if you want reliability how about a Lexus GX series like the 460 right behind me there so the next unreliable heap is this unit right behind me here yeah in fact this is hybrid and in fact it has a four-cylinder engine and in fact it's gonna cost you a lot of money to continually maintain over the years well this is actually a whoops no that's not it it's actually a Volvo like we have right here this is a Volvo this is one of those models that clearly can and will cost you money in the long run now yes it's a very elegant design beautiful headlights in these latest Volvos very stout looking front end beautiful high gloss finishing there as well as in the front bottom lip beautiful wheels laser cut in fact as well as some great styling detail along the side of these vehicles. Gotta love these lines. A lot of great detail and efforts put into the looks of these vehicles. Of course, you have these vertical lights, beautiful. And of course, we have this little roof rack here to haul that garbage over to the dump. And we do have some nice finishing touches like piano gloss black finishing there, as well as throughout the grill. And what about the inside? The interior is absolutely beautiful with these interesting bolstered seats. Of course, different textures and combination of materials makes it very interesting. High quality finishing makes this vehicle feel as quality as a modern day Audi. You have these fake tailpipes, both sides right there. You actually hide them out of sight, out of mind. Big glass on top, very interesting there. And just a whole plethora of different technologies buried in this vehicle. But what are some of the issues and why is this vehicle not worth buying because of its reliability issues? Well, it is Euro, so it's going to cost you more money anyway. But there's actually a lot of problems. Like over here. Brakes, for example. They prematurely wear. The brakes aren't all that large. And of course, because the weight of this vehicle means that a lot of times these brakes prematurely wear. And you're going to have a situation with warped brake rotors and you're going to have to change them well in advance. Unfortunately, it's not just that. The tire pressuring monitoring system which isn't buried in there. Like a lot of modern day vehicles, the sensors are actually in the rim. Here they're not. So in this case, the ABS sensors actually detect the rolling resistance and as well as the rolling diameter to detect whether you have lower air in that wheel. They're much more prone to false positives. And as a result, you're getting much more activation on the dashboard, which is becomes a pain because you're questioning how right that actually is or the integrity of the system. There's some vibration issues with some of these vehicles in the wheels because they use a sound deadening foam within the tire system as well to reduce sound and rolling resistance noise that you would typically get ripping down the highway and sometimes it breaks loose causes vibration and that's just one of many things that could cause vibration other things ball joints balanced wheels axles and many many more issues 
but it's a lot of the technology that does become problematic. As well, we talk about the infotainment system in the center of the dashboard. And usually it becomes a problem on top of a problem, means multiple upgrades, firmware updates just to keep it right, just so you don't have problems and glitches. So a lot of electrics, a lot of the electronic innovations are what keeps this vehicle slightly problematic and results in many trips to the dealer. But the biggest thing is the innovation that takes this thing down because Consumers Reports actually ranks us quite low just because of its natural history. One thing that stands out to me is the engine and the drivetrain. That's the big thing. Innovation, why on earth would you want to have a four-cylinder engine, a hybrid, but not only a supercharger strapped on and a turbocharger strapped onto it. Yes, they're trying to get that zero turbo lag, but they're also trying to get that turbo power for top end. A lot of boost pressure into the engine, resulting in potential much more harm and strain on that drivetrain in the long run. Now as well, because of that, what they're finding is some engines as little as 50,000 miles and you're getting heavy oil consumption. And that a lot of times had to do with the piston rings and the very design. And later models were updated, but unfortunately, if you had a model and you ran out of warranty, you could be on the loop losing end of paying for some major engine repairs and that's just not acceptable think about it you hit 60 70 80 thousand miles your warranty runs out and all of a sudden you're having to do a rebuild or possibly top up your oil court every 500 miles that's not good but that's a result and that's truly why it's all the innovation technology and engine reliability or durability is why i truly can't suggest a volvo xc60 Instead of the Volvo, I would likely recommend a vehicle like the Acura RDX right here. You're likely going to have just as much fun driving it and likely less problems. And with all of that said, right there, you're going to love that. That's all about some of the most reliable SUVs on the market today. Hope to see each and every one of you on the next one. We'll see you real soon. Bye-bye.